episode is this? <laughs> and we're live, boys and girls. Oh my god, there's a sweet have <clears throat> shenanigans. It's 2018, the first episode of the year, and because we bailed last week because uh, Dave was a wiener and Alan sucked balls. Yeah, Dave and lock, lock, lock was the only one ready to do stuff. <laughs> so the guy at law school showed up. He's like, where the hell are you guys? And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to call him. Yeah, no, we're not doing it. So uh, and he's like, what? And, you know, <laughs> so we all suck. But Locke, dude, hi, how's it going? Ah, going good, going good. You you are in Portland now, are you? I'm, or are you I'm in Portland, yeah. Very good. Uh, have you attended classes yet already? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. No, and... the... Uh... Oh, it's it's going to be a heavy semester. I think it looks like I've got two 30-page, no, a 30-page and a 40-page paper to write. Oh, good um, lord, man. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah. Wow. So this will be the last time we see Locke alive. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, so uh, 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 I don't know how to start this because it is, you know, it's it's... 2018 and well uh, let's let's start with the beer okay that's a good point i've how good. does this podcast oh. thing work <laughs> now the, before before us three the guys who actually have the beer start lock you of course are in portland and there's yeah. no chance of you getting the beer we got so let's yeah. talk about your beer first all right so here's here's what i got now this this looks like a, a fascinating thing this is breakside breweries uh old lord chubby cheeks <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> It's a, okay. It's eleven point six percent. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Oh, that's insane. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, international beer units are eighty-eight. Uh, there you go, D- oh. Dave. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Now we've we've had breakside products before. Yeah. No, these guys are, are they're building. They're, they're pretty good. Strength to strength. Like, um, so this is saying we're celebrating their seventh anniversary. So. So for seven years, that's that's uh, that's pretty substantial to make it up to Canada. Um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I I have been fairly impressed with their product uh, whenever I've had it. So I saw this, I thought this looked like something I would try. So here Very we go. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna Sweet. crack this puppy open. Right, crack it open. So uh, so that's what uh, more about her. That's what Locke has down in Portland, Oregon. Now up here in the fair country of Canada, uh, we hopefully, all three of us, have Phillips Brewing Dr. Funk. From Phillips. Dr. Funk. S- Dr. Now, Funk. Now, now, now and we, confess my God, we all have it. We have the same beer. Confess uh, to me, Jane. The only reason okay. why you chose this is because it has a picture of what looks like Dr. Teeth from the Electric Mayhem. Dr. Teeth, it. the Electric Mayhem, mother truckers, because holy hell, why not? Yeah. Um it's a blatant ripoff of uh, it's like uh, Doctor Teeth and uh, Bob Ross had a love child, and, <laughs> and that, you know, and maybe maybe Elton John was in the closet filming it. So, um, <laughs> it's a really disturbing idea. Come to think of it, uh, but yeah, and actually, and I bought this like back in oh I don't know like a month ago or more. Uh, because I thought it would be kind of cool to do, but I bought like four or five and we chose the other ones. So I'm glad we're doing it. So it's been sitting around getting cold and I'm using it's the dedication. keys today. I'm using, I'm using my, my handy. I'm using my steam there. whistle. Uh, my steam whistle is hanging up right now. The uh, space penis is, is uh, hanging up right now, but it doesn't matter because this is a dark lager dunkel. Now, essentially, it is it is a seasonal beer, but they do make it every year. Um, Which is interesting because I've never seen it before. Uh, well, this is the second year I've seen it. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure. Uh, unless, unless, now that's granted, unless they made a, a beer in previous years that had a very similar uh, logo. So, which is entirely possible because it's not like I take pictures of beer all the time. Maybe. <laughs> so it's got a bit of a cola look to it. Yeah, it's very wow. dark. It's got an effervescent sort of, uh, it's definitely carbonated to the gills. So uh, I want to smell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is a dunkel. Tell, wow. tell us what a dunkel is. 
Locke, do you want to jump in on this one? Because I have no bloody idea. Uh, Dunkel, it's a German style. I usually take them to be sort of, uh, sort of, I, mm, sort of like a, a brown ale kind of a kind of a thing. Well, it is a kind it's a German sweet. lager. Uh, it is he oh. Dunkel is German for dark. dark so okay. uh, big surprise there. But it's a lager, is it? But it is a lager. Now, essentially, um, we've done a couple of Dunkles on the show. Uh, oh, which reminds me. Oh, my God. I told this to Dave last week. Dave. Dave. Did you want, do you want to, do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them? I, Never mind. I'll, I'll tell no, you. You, 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 go don't, ahead. you don't remember, obviously. Uh, but anyway, I have now successfully gone through every single 126 episodes of the show. Sorry, 27. Uh, and I now have documented every single beer that we have consumed on the show. Uh, and I was very pleased about finishing that over the holidays. Uh, I, I like I took I took like an, almost an entire day uh, the week before last and finished them off. So uh, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but that means I can actually tell you uh, how many dunkles we have actually done. And apparently it's zero. But that's okay, because I might have documented them incorrectly. You never know. It was over the holidays. Um, yeah, here we go. We did the steampunk dunkel. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, that's the only dunkel we've done. I thought we'd done two, but no, apparently not. Longwood Brewing, uh, and we did it back in episode 100. So that was... Uh, last spring that was, that was it was 27 episodes ago so anyway um but yeah so uh, i we have so to what are we find thinking about levels. this beer i'm really liking it myself um yeah here's the thing interesting. for the longest time i hated i hated loggers um my dad is a logger guy but i never really fell in love with them uh, mainly because my exposure to uh, to uh, loggers was um, <laughs> big how burly I men say? in plaid. That's that's right. Only oh, kills. I am only... lumberjack and I am okay. I work all night. Um, so I sleep all night. Anyway, but last year, the year before, um, Red Truck, who which is right across the street from me uh did a dark lager and i thought i'll try it and i actually liked it so um okay i think this is going to lead into think. our first uh discussion for the first article but uh so let's hold that thought for a moment all right uh, let's let's finish up our thoughts on this particular beer uh dave what do you think i'm really liking this one yeah it's this is one of the easier drinking ones. Mm -hmm. Like the kind of thing you could give it's to very, somebody very easy drinking. who isn't a real beer person. Right. And it, it'd be like a gateway beer. That's my take. Okay. For me, it's um, uh, lacking a bit of flavor. Um, I would like, I don't know. Maybe more, a little bit more maltiness. I'm expecting from it okay. that isn't there. Um, well, it's not a, it's not a complicated beer, is it? It's not. It's, it's not complicated at all. Um, uh, this isn't a beer. I I would buy this beer because of the the label, the marketing behind it. You know, hey, it's got Doctor Teeth on it. I mean, yeah, of course I'm going to buy that. The actual beer itself. I've had many other beers uh, from Phillips, in fact, that are better than this one. I don't hate it. It's not something that I would purchase too often, though. The way I put it, though, is I wouldn't want to have a banquet every night. <laughs> no? You wouldn't want to have a banquet every night. What does that even mean? I don't, well, don't think I'd want banquet, to have a banquet every night. A banquet is all fancy, schmancy, and complicated, and lots of flavors going on. But this is more like 
you're basic meat and potatoes night. Okay. Right. Anyway. The, the, this beer is the equivalent of going to the grocery store and getting a pre-made rotisserie chicken in one of those plastic uh, clamshell packages. And you go and buy like some McCain super fries and you cook the super Ooh, fries. No, you get some mojos. Some what? <laughs> <laughs> some mojos. Okay. <laughs> well, what's a mojo? What? You need to get yourself down to quality. Okay, tell me what a mojo is. Mojos are wedgies that have really tasty uh, batter put on them. Let me tell you oh, something. Okay. Let me tell you something interesting about Portland. The the uncontested um, snacking side of you know of choice around here is the tater tot. Tots, really? tots are ubiquitous. You don't go into a restaurant that you know the, if they've got fries, they better have tots. <laughs> That's I, awesome. I, I, yeah, I've actually. Where have I seen recently in Vancouver? Maybe it was Victoria where I've seen uh, tater tots on the menu. Uh, yeah. uh, just recently, it's yeah. I think, well, I think it's taco time. Oh my god! Oh, like I've ever taco been. Time taco time calls Mexi fries. I, well, I've never been to Taco Time, and, and I'm never, I'm not breaking that uh, that record. Okay, okay. So I, I'll just point out, I've never been to Taco Time myself, but I remember the commercials. Oh, I go to Taco and, Time, and they always had the tater tots wrong, with the like, wrong Mexico. Taco Time. Isn't Taco Time just the the Canadian version of Taco Bell? No, no, no. They're different. Um, Taco Bell is is weirder than Taco Time to me. Like Taco Bell is a whole. <laughs> it, it, it's like they've come up with a, a, a new compound out of which to make food, and they're like they're trying to see if they can mold it into the shape of Mexican food. It's like it, it's mm. it's really, but it's sort of good in this peripherally disturbing way. Like it's uncanny valley. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. <laughs> Now, let me say something about my beverage, because uh, something needs to be said. This is uh, everything I had hoped it would be and more. So so it's called, what? what is this thing called? It's called Old Lord Chubby Cheeks. And, That's an awesome name. Yeah. Old Lord Chubby Cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, 11.6%. It's got, it's got um, a sort of a base of a, a kind of like a, a plum pudding soaked in brandy, but then mm. there's there's layers of of sort of, you know, uh, old leather and tobacco kind of you know sort of uh, on the finish. Like it's this is this is quite a beverage. Um, what 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 is it like? Like what kind of beer is it? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. So let me let me see what it says on the side here. Uh, It calls it a uh, delicious. Yeah, you're right. It is delicious. What is it? But what is it? I, I mean, I'm assuming just by the alcohol content that barley wine is probably the, the correct term for it. But probably. Uh, oh, At 11.6%, yeah. that would explain it. Heirloom wheat. Um, okay. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, what this is is a barrel aged wheat wine. Mm, no weird. How about that? Now, that's an interesting idea. So that explains a lot. This is yeah. This is this is worth trying. If you guys ever get get a hold of a a, a wheat wine, check it out. Uh, it is. I just am looking it up, and it is available in Vancouver. Um, mm. At least it was uh, two months ago. Um, but hey, maybe we'll try it. Um, I'm just looking at their website, uh, trying to find out uh, who uh, they have a beer named Anus. No, <laughs> a sour golden ale with white nectarines. Uh, Anus Mariabus. Uh, sorry, I read. I just anyway. <laughs> Camera obscura. <laughs> you guys tried the Anus beer. <laughs> um, there's one called Dog and Pony Show, one called Camera Obscura, Terra Incognita, ha uh, hashtag Friends Making Memories, uh, The Man Who Made Dessert, 
uh, Persona Non Grata Carte Blanche part, uh, next next Thursday. Uh, so they have some really creative beer names. Um, that beer Which is one. Not, did we do? Uh, from Breakside. Yeah, we did a Breakside beer. Um, trying to find it here. I, I will tell you. I will tell you in a moment. Okay. Uh, we did Liquid Sunshine and the Salted Caramel Breakfast Stout on episode fifty-seven. Oh my God! It's like asking the computer on any '80s science fiction show. It's great. <laughs> Peter, what what beer did we do in when we were, you know, as it as it goes, right? We did Brexit Brewery Liquid Sunshine Salted Caramel Breakfast Stone. You know, I wonder. <clears throat> I wonder if any of us had like a, an Amazon Echo. Or you know anything that uses Alexa or anything? If we spoke into it, that question, I wonder if it would come back with an answer. Hmm. Shane's typing away. Sorry, I just had two phone calls in a row from my family, and I'm like, I'm live streaming. You want to see what I'm doing right now? Go on the web. <laughs> what um, are you doing right now, Shane? Dude, why are you guys? Not, why are you not answering your phone? Why? What are you wearing? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's all I need. Oh, sorry. Didn't realize your show was more important. <laughs> anyway, it's called scheduling, people. And Locke is here. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm just going to send them a link and they can come watch. You know what? Come watch. There. So anyway, um, so yeah, so we had those two beers. Uh, the uh, Liquid Sunshine was a Pilsner. Um Alan, this is a segue into what you wanted to bring up in more ways than one. Okay, so <clears throat> it's a brand new year. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of things that happened in beer in 2017. So what could maybe things happen in beer? beer in 2018? So uh, a guy named Rob Mangelsdorf <clears throat> has uh, written an article in the Vancouver Courier, yeah. which was published uh, yesterday, it looks like. I feel like uh, we're where... in an alternate universe here. Pardon? Rob Mangelstorff writing in the Vancouver Courier. I feel like we're in 1888 or something. Oh. <laughs> yeah, did you pick that up in The Colonist or was it The Times? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, uh, here are his predictions for craft beer this year. <clears throat> he predicts lager uh basically he's saying that um uh the craft beer industry has run out of weird esoteric styles to revive uh and um and uh now the time is right for uh lagers to make a comeback but it's not going to be the lagers that our parents drink like labats and budweiser and all that no this will be Loggers made with like actual hops um, and quality <laughs> malts to, and uh, as uh, GMO hops or uh, hops made of I don't know as opposed to hop extra skin or something. Okay, uh, and malts instead of using like corn and rice. Um, okay, so the loggers include Pilsners, uh, the Kolsch Alt beer. And several other styles, including the Dunkel. Um, right. So all of these uh, these kinds of beers are probably going to be on the horizon. Um, they have already been um, quite popular down south of the border. Um, Pilsners are experiencing a huge renaissance, uh, according to uh, the co-owner of Slow Hand um, Beer Company. Uh, and uh, they're in Vancouver, and uh, they want to um, see that kind of trend occur here in BC as well. Hmm. Cool. So I think it means that we need to make our own beer then. We need to, you know, pony up and get with the times and make sure that we're, you know, making beer like cryptocurrency. Mm. 
Yeah. Or 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 making cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cryptocurrencies out there. The Crafty Boys cryptocurrency. We'll call it the doldrums. Bottle caps. The bottle cap. <laughs> we'll call, we'll call it coin. the cap. Caps are going to be the You're next collecting, cryptocurrency. Collecting, yeah, collecting caps. Sounds like a video game I play uh, once in a while. Uh <clears throat> so that that kind of goes into what you were talking about before about how you're starting to appreciate loggers now, Shane. So basically this is my year then for beer. Mm. I guess I picked the wrong year to stop drinking beer. Um <laughs> So Dave, what do you think of this trend? Are you, are you uh, I know you're more of a fruity airy fairy <laughs> Uh, beer loving guy of the ginger or fruit persuasion. So I tell you, um, man, that Krabby's is still my favorite. The Krabby's, yeah, me too. Me too. It is one of my it's high up on my list. What uh what is the uh what is your read on sort of what, what the trend is gonna be for this year in theory? Oh t- are you, you excited by this prospect? Well, yeah, I think that's kind of cool because I'm liking this. So it'd be interesting to see where they take it, what to do with it. Um, hoping, of course, that, you know, it would still uh, have some of this, some similar elements, I guess, to the flavors. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, let's be real here. I think when you change things up, even with a certain style, you're going to get all kinds of weird and wonderful things happening flavor wise. So, <clears throat> yeah, but I, I, I'm definitely down. I think, I think, yeah, because I, I don't know. I think IPAs in a lot of ways, as much as I love them, are played out in some respects because they have, um, I, I don't know, when you, when you start, when you, when you've perfected a style of beer, when you've, prote- you know, when you've made it so amazing that, you know, you can't go, yeah. You can't you can't break the fat tug barrier. No. I mean, to me, that's <laughs> that's pretty high up there. Yeah. Um, there's also um, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the one that you like, Locke, uh, or at least one of the ones you like is the <laughs> <laughs> the triple hop. Uh, what is it? The hop, the hop circle. Um, is that what it's called? Oh, out of Phillips products, yeah, I like, I like, I like the hop circle. But I mean, if, but there's, if, we're, talking, that's if, we're, talking, if we're talking about you know the like the the oh my god that's deadly sort of double ipa the the one the one that i i i always pick is is as the mightiest is is the blue bridge mostly because it, it'll sneak up on you like a, like you're drinking like like sort of a lager yeah i mean some of those some of i mean some of the beers lately uh the northeast style uh of ipas which they're yeah. using different uh sort of more citrusy flavory hops um Uplin power powder and and uh, hop emulsification techniques. Exactly, and uh, a lot of those. Beca- I mean, they're so the flavor's enjoyable, but there's a smoother edge to it. There's the, mm. the bitterness kind of drops away, and and uh, there's also the yeah. yeah. It's it's like it's like when I have Guinness. If I have one Guinness, I'm happy. If I have two, I'm happier. But you know, there, <laughs> there have been times where you I. I remember the first time I ever <laughs> experienced you? the the first yeah vaguely uh, the first time I ever had uh, a Guinness uh, problem where I was at um, it was a, a restaurant on Wharf Street uh, mm. like a, it was an Irish pub of some kind which I, it might still be there probably not but um, and I went there with a bunch of people from work and we, we were celebrating somebody's birthday or something and we. Uh, Oh, by the way, there's a message in the back channel lock uh, says, why are you so dark? Uh, <laughs> turn on a light, man. <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, the uh, first two were, you know, like drinking a beer. It tasted like beer. But then at some point I slid into the just drinking the, the beverage and, and not even tasting the flavor anymore. And, and I don't know. Because mm. 
and and it was like, yeah, have another. I'm like, oh yeah, great, not a problem. Had another, and then you know it was like drinking water after a while. Yeah, they become yeah. infinitely quaffable, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And I I don't really experience that with any other beer. I mean, because I, I taste bitterness, I taste uh, you know something about the beer that you know it it because if I get to a certain point, like after two pints, maybe then, you know, I start to kind of go, something goes off of the beer, you know, something doesn't, but it doesn't quite taste right. So I'll actually stop um, or slow down because it's, it, there's just something about it. But for Guinness, I'm a, you know, if, if, if Guinness was the only thing I had on the planet to drink, I would be dead by now uh, mm-hmm. because I, I, I wouldn't have stopped. It's just like more, more, give me more, bring me the barrel, bring me the barrel. <clears throat> But, uh, hmm. and Alan's never like that. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. It, it, there's, I mean, there's something to, if, if you're making beer commercially, how quaffable do you want your beer to be? I mean, you feel like selling a beer, you feel like selling 30. I mean, well, um, exactly. Right. And, um, I mean, like Apple is being told, uh, by their their uh, their investors now, uh, that Apple needs to take some responsibility for the encouragement of people to use their uh, tablets and cell phones, uh, because it is now officially a psychological uh, psychological condition where uh, it's being compared to like you know addiction to uh, to cocaine or something. Um, uh, so basically, do you think beer companies need to take some responsibility to go okay? Guys, we need to talk about responsibility, or uh, should they do something like changing their product a bit to make it less quaffable? It'll never happen, but I'm just saying that uh, that trend, or that 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 seems to be something starting in the tech industry, mm-hmm. and I find that a lot of sort of tech stuff that happens kind of drifts into the the alcohol and beverage uh, uh, world as well. I don't know why, because <laughs> we're nerds and we like beer. I don't know. There's just something about it, and I and I and I. It just happened last week where they, they, you know, the board is like, hey, you're going to start taking responsibility and start up programs and change the products so that, you know, it's not as addictive. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Um, it's kind of like trying to police the uh, the unwashed masses. And I don't think that's ever, ever been done uh, unless lock in history. I have missed something that maybe. Uh, I should remember. Oh, oh, I don't know about any of that. I, I, I was just speculating on, on, well, I mean, perhaps the answer is what they need to put more booze in the beer. <laughs> well, Look, that would definitely, okay. Well, every special. beer is now 25% alcohol. So, you know, you have one, you're finished and you're either asleep. Or uh, falling down, so I mean, that's an idea. I mean, look, uh, you know, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is sort of like, you know, this is the funny thing with it, with certain products. Like, is it is the is the right balance to have, you know be one and done, or is the right balance to? I mean, ultimately, uh, I guess I guess in terms of people's technological addictions, without chasing down the rabbit hole of uh, of all of that, I gotta wonder if. I mean, if if you're if you're addicted to drink, I sort of understand it. If you drink, addicted to what apps? I guess. Well, I think I mean the big thing. I mean the big the apps. big reason the reason very this dangerous. is very dangerous. You go first. Um, I mean, the reason that this is happening is that there is now um, a lot of pushback on, on the uh, the dopamine rush that people get, and from people hitting the like button or hitting the heart on the Instagram or hitting the you know the equivalent on all these social level apps, right? So we have all these social apps that are so, that are out so there. So has anybody promote. has has anybody found the gin yet? of of social media apps like like so up up to a certain point you know like people were brewing their home brew and you know maybe even freezing it over the winter to you know sharpen her up a little but but distilling takes things to a whole nother level right the right. advent of gin 
you know, anybody that knows the, the old, you know, uh, William Hogarth, Gin Lane and Beer Street, you know, mm. Beer Street, everybody's celebrating Gin Lane, Lane, everybody's like, you know, everybody's so hammered that, you know, they're throwing babies in the gutter and, every, you know, it's all chaos, right? Um, I guess what I'm wondering is, it, has anybody distilled out a more potent, more more deadly venom in terms of, you know, like, what is it, what is it that makes social media apps addictive? Has anybody tried to push that as far as it goes? Is, I mean, is that effectively what we expect out of Facebook? I, I don't know. I, I don't use Facebook. So, so there you go on that. But I, I got to imagine it'd be one of the dating apps to be sort of probably vying for that position, wouldn't it? Well, um, funny you should mention that because I, there's a great, uh, little documentary series um, that's popped up on Netflix in the last six months or so um, where they actually talk about that in, in some not, I mean, not so much depth that it's boring, but they talk about it enough to actually make it interesting um, where because they're, because you have access to so many different individuals on the planet uh, on these apps like Tinder and whatnot, um, you never settle on anything like you completely just go to the next thing uh whether or not the person you have found is like the most perfect match in the world and of course Locke is gone now <laughs> he's who knows where he went um but it is all it all comes back to that whole rush that you get the the little endorphin thing that 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 happens when you either Basically, you get praised virtually. You get some sort of level of praise, uh, like great job on that photo, or like that thing you shared, or you know that kind of stuff. Um, and it has developed into like, and this is the thing is that it gets it's apparently gotten to a level of like the, these hard drugs like you know heroin and, and cocaine, where um, you are just replacing something that'll you know crush your veins to death and kill you. Uh, to... so, so what you're saying is eventually we could see like a whole bunch of like strung out people like sitting on sidewalks downtown apparently this and instead already... of them asking for change they're going to ask you if you liked them pretty much pretty much can you please give me a like uh you're like scratching bugs under my skin i haven't had a no one liked my instagram photo i mean it, you know quite honestly <laughs> it it is already happening apparently to especially uh you know sort of the, the tween ages you know like 12 13 14 year olds that um are having the worst problems of it because they are you know the ones that have grown up with it in their face the entire uh you know li their entire lifetime where us gen xers um are somewhat resilient i suppose uh i don't I mean maybe who knows but uh you know, we still, I mean, have. Locke, Locke does not use Facebook. You know, why does he not use Facebook? Forgot his password. Did he care? No. He's like, I don't need it anyway. Whatever. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll have, I have news for you. Kids yeah. today do not use Facebook. No, no, I, I, I've, I've heard that many, many times. For old people. That's for people <laughs> like my parents. Um, I mean, here's the thing. I, I have fallen off of using Facebook as a, personal thing anyway and i actually i logged in today and i have like 370 so notices of things i've missed and i just closed it i'm like oh, i can't even be bothered <laughs> Stuff, <laughs> stuff's happened and i and i don't care um facebook is going the way of myspace i i would hope so in a lot of ways um there's definitely um but so is twitter I don't know. Twitter is kind uh, of a different. Twitter is kind of a different beast, right? I mean, here's the thing: you can't. Different beast, you but can't I, 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 I don't think Twitter's going to last. Um, uh, that's a that's a possibility. I mean, Yahoo's done. Tumblr is going to crash when Tumblr goes under, or when Yahoo goes under. Um, I mean, but I mean, all of these things have the same problem. Every single platform, regardless of what it is, with maybe the exception of Elo. No, I never heard of it. Yeah, that's the problem there. Um, but essentially, uh, all these platforms rely on eyeballs and advertising and uh, people's personal data. And now we're kind of, you know, the Snowden thing came out and people kind of started, sort of started to pay attention. Um, sort of, I, I, not as much as I would have hoped, but um, 
you know, they are, there's all these real concerns about not necessarily the, the breaches, but, and, and people getting hacked and things like that, but more about how these platforms are trying to survive and they're doing nefarious things in order to do so. Um, where Facebook has tried to kind of do the things that Google does, but, you know, because Google's got the free stuff, but they have the pay stuff and they do a whole lot more rather where Facebook is really specifically about the individuals. And now they've got, what is this ridiculous virtual chat business, which really looked, I saw when it came out in like October, November, they did this big launch about it. It just looked stupid, like completely stupid. And now I'm hearing uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jeremy Turner uh, called me the other day. He has a second virtual headset now. And uh, now he's able to go into these virtual chat rooms. And so I searched for this going, what does that look like? And there's like, videos of people crawling on the floor and doing all kinds of weird stuff like leaning up against walls with their face and like I, I don't i don't understand what they're doing but apparently that's the chat world in virtual space so i don't know i i'm not a heavy believer in vr at the moment uh, <laughs> gaming sure it's going to push the the platforms but ultimately it's like second life I have enough trouble with my first life, so why would I want a second one to deal with? No, too? No. And I think that's creeped into you know the social platforms where you know there's so much focus and addiction happening, uh, it's making people unhappy. And now I'm hoping people go, you know what? I don't need to worry about oh, what the hell is going on. Oh, Facebook. oh, oh, oh! I love it. I love it. A new sim game, sim. Uh, Sim Facebook or something like that. <laughs> Sim Facebook. Uh, Not only could you be on Facebook, but now it's a virtual replication. <laughs> Yay! That's so awesome. Oh God, let me. <clears throat> you know, you know, it's when when it gets to the point where we can have virtual characters that are incredibly lifelike. That you know, we we cannot tell the difference between you know whether or not these characters are alive. Uh, it's going to happen where you have. Uh, you know, like Kermit the Frog, you know, telling you to, you know, if you want to touch me, that'll be okay. You know, that kind of creepy <laughs> shit's going to happen. And, <laughs> although I have to, I have to say, I'm really excited for the movie. Uh, I think, is it March or is it May? I can't remember, but uh, uh, Ready Player One, which if you guys haven't read it, read it before you see it because as much as i rely or or believe in what steven spielberg is going to bring to the screen it is the best read i've had in a long time um, yeah it's a good book it's aimed directly at the four of us yeah it's like directly all right who was born in the 70s <laughs> there they are oh you know i mean it's, it's fish in a barrel it's got dnd it has you know every single yeah. 80s flick that we reference it's got you know it's got all of that stuff so um, and hell, if I could drive a DeLorean in a virtual race, why the hell wouldn't I? So and it's not just a DeLorean, it's a back to the future DeLorean. Mm, that's true. Mm. It's not just a plain old de boring DeLorean. Uh, <laughs> it's a very exciting, you know, Mr. Fusion uh, version. Although I didn't see the uh, in the trailer, I didn't see uh, any of the railway rail version ones. Uh, or as I learned over the holidays when I was like, I'm going to go to BC Shaver and check out what, you know, some of the cool models are, because you know what? I, I don't know. I'm, I've, I've got this sudden desire to go and, and get yeah, a model. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I went in there and I, the number of different, you know, official back to the future, uh, DeLorean models, you know, the first one is now called the mock or the Mark one Mark two is the one from back to the future two that flies. And then the third one from the third movie uh, is the mark surprisingly three, but uh, and they had oh I, it was astounding. I want to buy. I want to. I want to get some and actually put them together. Because I actually, Alan, whatever happened to your Back to the Future models? Uh, <clears throat> well, they're in a box. Um, they're in a box until I have a place to to store them. I actually have, like, uh, I I built a model myself, and it was actually it was a pretty good model. But eventually, over time, the glue kind of wore down and parts started to fall off and stuff. So I ended up buying like a one sixteenth uh, scale um, uh, replica uh, die cast 
oh, from okay. BC cool. Shaver actually, and um, <clears throat> and that's in a box somewhere, and it's it got a display case and everything. And at, at some point, when I have space, I will display it. Well, you know, your oldest child is how old now? He's eighteen. Get out! <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know that room you got that used to be my room and you know what that means i want it back <laughs> um, oh you can't make enough money working oh it's terrible get another job move out um yeah <laughs> anyway. um dave have you seen star wars that, that is hilarious because that's exactly what I was going to ask. Luck, you've seen Star Wars. Yes. I've seen Star Wars. Alan yeah. has seen Star Wars. Yeah. Dave has seen Star Wars. What do we think of the Star Wars film? <laughs> I like the Star Wars. I, I I I like I like the fact that they they kind of teased me into thinking that they were about to really annoy that shit out of me. By doing a, a total duplicate scene of something I've seen before, and then kind of went, "Whoops, no, we're going to do it different," and that says that they're thinking about it at least. Um, and I like the fact that the um, the new uh, at at walkers have like chimpanzee fist sort of legs in the front. Um. They actually have a name. Um, They're huge too. Like yeah, you saw, like a traditional yeah. walker, like next to one of those things. It's like they're like four times the size. Uh, the new order, not the band. Thank you, computer. Um, <laughs> they're called like ATRTs or something. Um, but it, but apparently they're you know they're, they're the new order version of the of the ad at but um dave what what is your sort of what did you think what did you think eh eh <laughs> how do i mute this bastard um <laughs> dave is like that on everything he's like, like meh on everything dave you just had group except, except for crabbies how was it except yeah. for crabbies yeah except no for they, they fucked up great. They fucked up. Okay. Now here's 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 before Alan says anything. The thing that I watched yesterday um was Kevin Smith's review. Have you guys seen Kevin Smith's review of the No? No, it's no. probably awesome. It's an hour and a half. Really? And I, it blew by. Um Wow. And let me tell you why. Um I think the, the 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 biggest thing that he enjoyed was how the director whose name I can't remember right now, Ryan uh, Johnson, he, that guy, Brian. So did you say Brian Johnson? I said Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Johnson. Oh, all right. now is it Ryan or Rian? I have no idea. Because R I A N, and I've heard somebody say Ryan, so I just assume that's what it is. But I always read it as Rian. That is a very good question. Um, I don't know. Figure it out. I will find out for you, and I'll report back to you next week. Um, Do that. The uh, basically uh, the director um, had a fundamental disagreement with how Abrams did the Force Awakens, and used humor to poke fun at it. So we had the big dramatic scene at the end of the force awakens where the character of Ray is found Luke Skywalker and she's got the thing. And then in this film, he just kind of grabs and goes, eh, you know, tosses it over his shoulder. Um, and that yeah, was repeated that was a few different sweet. times where there's all these different characters that mm -hmm. did those kinds of sort of, ah, whatever. And I actually had not thought of that until he mentioned it because, you know, I, I kind of thought of it where, uh, the story, uh, thankfully, was going in, in a direction that we hadn't seen in a lot of ways, and it was a completely brand new uh, thing. But uh, that still held surprises that even though, you know, once in a while you're going through the film and you're kind of going, oh, I know why they're doing that, because that thing is going to do that, another thing, and that's going to happen. 
and then uh they had um these sort of i don't know just just in your face abram sort of moments where uh you know we're we know that character was so important snoke uh, he was kind of cool spoilers uh and then he gets taken out like a punk you know say what again you know that kind of sort of <laughs> thing where he's this i'm gonna destroy the universe and everyone's gonna suck my space penis and then suddenly uh it's like well screw that pop pop and then he's gone and it's like what the hell and you know it was kind of like the director going you know abrams i know what you were doing and i see what you were doing and i kind of enjoy what you did but dude, don't remake the other film. I'm going to just destroy all this stuff that you tried to bring in to make it interesting. That was just basically reinventing an emperor, reinventing a Darth Vader. No, no, no we're taking, we're, we're taking these punks out and we're going to go and, you know, everyone's going to be running through crystal caves with little tiny Fox creatures. And that's how it's going to be. Ugh. It was kind of like reading like an extended universe novel where you're reading these books and they're taking characters and creating characters that, you know, know what happened in you know oh yeah the battle of yavin yeah that was really an important moment and then you know but not really making much more about it because i have to go bring in the crops and you know get some droids up on the south whatever before you know, let me help the bay yeah south, exactly south ridge south ridge uh so yeah i mean but they you know they sort of have these these moments where they appreciate what's happened but then they the novelists were able to kind of go sideways and go oh, this is the story i want to tell and i'll reference back to the other stuff of course but that's not why i'm doing the story and i kind of think that's what this film did anyway i re go re go listen to his thing because it was it was amazing and he cried kevin uh, smith okay. crying I, man. I don't know if that's a selling point but uh if you have ever watched uh or listened to the podcast fat man on batman um it's like kevin smith's entire <laughs> existence is built upon the batman mythos huh. he, he cries almost every episode about how much he loves this character so anyway all right um all right but the point the point being is that his passion is there and i and i kind of enjoy that and i feed off of it a bit so um you know and he's and he's looked uh you know he he had uh, if you've ever seen uh the uh jay and silent bob strike back yeah. I mean, he worked with a bunch of these star wars icons back then yeah. um i mean who else can get mark hamill yeah. to put on a huge fist and call himself cock knocker so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would imagine anybody could actually <laughs> hey mark hold this why just do it and say cock knocker five times uh, cock knocker now, say it was like you're mad at me. Oh, well, I'm actually kind of mad at you, you cock knocker. Yeah, no, do it again, but louder. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this? We're in a parking lot, sir. Oh, no, come on. Just do it again. Um, God. See, I played that entire scene out in my head. It's like I'd actually thought of it before. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Anyway, that said, Alan, uh, what did you think? Give me, give me your, give me your rough opinion. Give me, tell me what you think of the Star Wars. I've told you. I know, times. but I, I want, I want the passion. Oh, the okay. passion. <laughs> All right. Um, I liked it. I also didn't like it. Um, oh, look at that. That's, that's, that's kind of conflicted passion oh. right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, uh, what I was gargling beer. So, <laughs> I thought the movie was overall good i didn't like how i felt like they had taken the the they'd taken all the complexities from uh the force awakens and basically just like we had all been asking ourselves these questions for the last two years and it was just like yeah no they were nothing you know oh, two years of investment completely thrown down the tubes Oh, well, um, like the thing, like, like uh, raise parents, a big deal. And then it's like, now they were just like drunks that sold you for beer money. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. They sold you for beer money. <laughs> they left you in the desert. So, cause they were, you know, addicts. Here's, here's something I liked about it. it was the morality of, of, of this movie was grittier and it was like, I thought pretty balanced. I liked when 
they're they're dealing with the arms dealer and he's pointing out oh look you know arms dealer sells sells to the bad guys oh he's must, must be a bad guy oh look at that he sells to the good guys as well what does that mean huh right like like it's getting kids to think about that kind of stuff but you know it, partly a fairly early age and that's probably not a bad thing it's not because i mean you know what, what does he say uh right before he leaves like uh the good or no maybe it's during that when they've stolen that ship or whatever where he goes uh you know the good bad the good or the bad uh the rule is or the you know the wise thing is to don't you know don't join these uh these groups that think they're doing the right thing for whatever reason um mm. you know because i i think the most the most important scene out of the force awakens for me the one scene that i've, I've never forgotten because i haven't watched it since i saw it in the theater um really so i haven't really kind of I, i've watched rogue one like three times uh not just in the last like mm. two months or so but um because i think it's a, i think it's a better movie in a lot of ways but mm. um the uh the only thing that the, the biggest redeeming thing of, of the force awakens is that scene where uh hux is um giving his big speech right before they shoot the the planet killing weapon um mm -hmm. because that actor now i've watched that actor for uh, quite a bit um and a lot of the stuff that he's done is you know, run of the mill stories. It's all on, it's all on planet earth. It's all, you know, there, even though there were some that were kind of about time travel and things like that, which were kind of interesting, but the actor has so much talent that, you know, he's able to sort of become a, he's like a, one of the, uh, like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not a guana, uh, a chameleon, um, that you almost forget that he is just this actor. And then, then he was in star wars and i'm kind of like well that's that guy that was in that thing but then that scene happened where he's giving that you know the where he's like just about he's on the edge of bawling his eyes out about how much passion he's got for you know we're gonna bring the new order to like you know that kind of thing and i just <laughs> i remember that just so vividly that that fact that that one thing made the whole film for me um and then he gets made fun of in this film uh i'm still holding for admiral huck or Hux, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll keep waiting. You know, that whole thing at the very beginning of this, of this last film yeah. and which the tone shifted a lot. And I don't know. Hmm. I, it's going to be interesting with Abrams back. It's kind, of, it's kind of like Abrams took the ball back. You, you give me that. I saw what you did with that thing. And I am going <laughs> to, you know, and my episodes could be so much better. Uh, but again, hey, why? Okay, actually, answer me this question: Why the hell is Solo, the next Star Wars film to come out, coming out in May? Well, because Star Wars is been typically a a summer movie, yeah. and the only reason why the ones previous to now have been Christmas movies is because they got delayed. Force Awakens. So, got so this delayed. film is actually on time. The film with the so fire this director film is actually on time. Um, wow. So, uh, and now he, I, I wanted to say something about the solo film. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a comedy. <laughs> You're going to go out on a limb on that one, are you? I'm going out on a limb with it. With who, are they, who are they casting? Um. Han well, Solo is by somebody I don't recognize. He, I good, know he's been in a few good, things. Good, good, thank God. Lando yeah. Calrissian is uh, what's his name? Troy Danny Glover. Uh, Glover from no, uh, his name is Troy. It will <laughs> always be Troy. <laughs> um, the uh, childish Gambino guy. Yeah, Daniel Glover. Uh, yeah, so he's uh, he's talented. Um, I won't, I won't not say that I'm not nervous. I'm nervous, uh, that it's going to be uh, a comedy. I don't know. Like an action comedy, maybe even a buddy comedy. I, I hope, I really hope it's not. I mean, I, I kind of hope, for? okay. You know what it is to me? It's like when the character of Nog in Deep Space Nine, 
there's a scene that stuck with me where um, he's explaining to Cisco why he wants to join Starfleet. And the character of Nog up until that very point uh, for me is, is he was kind of comic relief. He had his father character who was kind of a goof, uh, you know, the younger brother of the, uh, of the bartending. Oh my God, I'm blanking on those guys' names. Um, but Nog was kind of, you kind of expected that Ferengi to be the same thing. And then he has this, again, this is about passion for me today. He has this impassioned speech that he gives because Cisco's like, screw it. You're just a Ferengi up yours, suck it or leave it. And he just turns on Cisco and and is, is like this mature character out of nowhere. Who's like, no, no, I am going to be in Starfleet because these are the reasons I do not want the life that my dad has. I do not want to be a Ferengi. And it was just this, you know, this moment of looking straight into the camera. It's like, fuck that. I'm doing my own thing and you're going to help me, you jerk. And uh, it, it stuck with me. So it, that's what I'm hoping that we get out of the solo film, that we have these characters that, yes, they're kind of goofy and, and, and you, you picture them as young, swashbuckling uh, people, but I don't want Jack Sparrow. I had Jack Sparrow oh, in one Lord. film, mm. and then he went sideways in another four films. And yeah, yeah, yeah I I, mean, I could only handle it, ten minutes of that latest film from Pirates of the Caribbean line. And I'm Oof. hoping it's the last. I I don't know if I'll be able to make my way through it, um, because I think it's they've just taken this character and gone. Well, this is what sells. So. Um, yeah, Johnny, if you can get, get really drunk before you get on set. Yeah, and here's here's some cocaine. And uh, <laughs> here, take this. Actually, give him the E. Give him the E. You know, and and then <laughs> yeah. do your thing. Um, I just I'm I just don't want that to happen to these characters that I have a I have a bit more respect for, um, as mm. uh, you know, swashbuckling sort of types. I mean. At least he's not going to be on a freighter running away from tentacled testicles that eat you. <laughs> I what? Hated that. I hated that film. What's this? Well, in in the Force Awakens, the character oh, of uh, oh, Han Solo is yeah, introduced yeah, yeah, by yeah. like flying around with like tentacle beasts of some sort. Yeah. Um, that looked surprisingly that did not. Uh, anyway. Yeah. <sighs> It's a Wednesday night. I can't get too riled up. Um, I'm out of beer. Yeah, so am I. So I guess we're done, boys. Um, Locke, thank you for coming, man. I am so impressed, yeah. considering you are already a week into uh, law school again. Um, thank you, sir. My suspicion is you probably won't be around for a while. That's probably right. <laughs> I'll invite you anyway, but if cool, you're, uh, you. but, uh, but do focus on your studies. Yeah. Let us know uh, you're still breathing anyways. Yes. Okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. we'll, we'll see you in the spring, I guess. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And thank you, Alan and Dave and, uh, Alan, as always, take us out. Oh shit. I'm not ready. <laughs> not, look, you're asking me to do something. Damn it. <laughs> Pause and pause. Okay, pause. Okay. Pause. Okay, here pause. we go. Any time now. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah! laughs>